Father, we want to thank you for this moment. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you, our God. We thank you, Lord, for this season of the year. We have, you have brought us to the end, Lord, of this year. We are almost concluding this year. We want to thank you for where we are. But we want to thank you for where we are going also. Because of all the seasons and the times in your hand. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, may your mighty hand be revealed in the lives of your people who are called by your name. You know them. They are here before you. Others are listening online. Others are receiving this message through the radio, through television, through the different means, Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you knew all of them. I pray that you will speak light into their lives. You will speak your light. You will speak your word. Whatever needs to be got out of them, you will get it, Lord. Whatever needs to, add it, to be added in their lives, you will add it, Master. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you glory and honor. You are an awesome God. Because of you, Lord, we are confident. We are confident of life. We are confident of the future. We are confident of your plans for us. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Throw light on your word for us. And help us to apply your word. And Father, I pray that you will take your people, take your church to the next level using your word. We thank you, we bless you. We give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. God bless you. You can take your seats. God bless you, choir. You are most welcome for our Eureka Kingdom time. The word Eureka simply comes from the Greek word that means I've got the answer. So when we look at the word of God, we are looking for answers. And the answer to our needs are found in the word of God. So we want to thank God for what he has done in our lives and through our lives. Today we are looking at a very important message. Where do you get this message properly? Correctly. It will really bless your life and enable you to be focused. For you to succeed in life, you need a focus. You need to be a focused person. So we are looking at the purpose of salvation. Purpose of salvation. Praise God. Say purpose of salvation. It is very, very important for us to understand the purpose of our salvation. Why has God saved you? Understanding that one thing can totally change your life. Can take you to a new plane, a new plane of life. And uh, many times people in the church are not well informed. They're not given the whole picture. The bigger picture. And when you don't have the bigger picture, it means you are you, you possess part truth. 
Sometimes we have almost all the main truth, but we don't know how they are connected. So you, you end up not getting the best out of what you have believed. Praise God. So I want us to look at the purpose of salvation. I know the Lord will throw light on this so that you can really get it. The purpose of salvation is not hell. I'm sorry, is not escaping hell or going to heaven. We don't get saved because we, we, God does not save us because of heaven. So the purpose of salvation is not really heaven. But heaven is a place where all uh, redeemed people of God the redeemed one they retire that's our place of retirement you go there you go back to heaven all the redeemed will retire there or go there when their life the end of their life comes yeah, their season on earth when it is over they retire to heaven. But heaven is not there just because it's going to, uh, to receive saved people. Because heaven is God's home. Heaven was there before even, before even man was created. Heaven was already there. So the reason of our salvation is not heaven. So we need to get it very well. Praise God. And the purpose of salvation is not death in Christ. Some people say, I want to die in Christ. I want to die in him. Let me get saved. When I die in him, I'll go to heaven. No. Dying in Christ is a result of abiding in him, remaining in him, abiding. <laughs> it's the result of abiding. Death in Christ is it's the result of abiding in him. You, are, you stay in him until the end. Then you go home. Yeah, you go to his, Jesus said in my father's house there are many mansions. Then you go home. That place is home. Praise God. So when you abide in him, you still end up in heaven. It's a place of retirement. Just a retirement. But heaven the purpose of our salvation is not heaven. It is really not heaven. Though heaven is our place of retirement. Praise God. At the end of our lives here on earth, we retire there. But of course, if you miss it, if you don't, if you don't enter the kingdom, if you don't accept salvation, then you end up in hell also. And hell is real. Because the Bible speaks about it very clear. So I want us to look from scripture and discover why has God saved us? What is the purpose of salvation? What is the purpose of salvation? Of course, we all know that the ultimate purpose of the church, ultimate is the glory of God. We all know that. But for us, what is the purpose? For our salvation. Why did he save us? Why did he save us? Let's look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 to 14. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 to 14. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. 
and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins first of all you need to understand that salvation rescues salvation liberates you from something liberates you from a certain territory liberates you from a certain country from a certain kingdom he has rescued us from the dominion, the territory, the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. So when you take that scripture, like you look at it the way you look at an equation, an equation is arranged so that the, the missing number or figure or whatever can be got when you, you look at it carefully and rearrange it you can find the answer so I want us to look at this he saved us. He rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. He rescued us. He saved us. He saved us to bring us where? From this scripture here, what is the purpose of salvation? Let me read it from the Living Bible. For he has rescued us out of the darkness. Out of darkness. Meaning ignorance. Darkness. He has rescued us from the darkness and gloom, misery, unhappiness of Satan's kingdom and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son who bought our freedom with his blood and forgave us all our sins. You rescued us from out of the darkness and gloom of Satan's kingdom and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. So his sister, he saved us to do, to bring us where? Tell us. You, yes. You're a teacher, eh? You teach. Okay. <laughs> so he saved us to bring us where? You clap for us. Into the kingdom. Into the kingdom. He saved us. He rescued us from another kingdom where people are ignorant, ignorant and the devil ties them there in misery with so many problems using his, the blood of his son. He brought us out. He redeemed us. He paid a price and everybody who accepts that payment walks out of the, of the territory from the territory of the wicked one. Ignorance. The devil operates where people don't know. He tortures you properly there. But the moment you see light, scripture says that uh, uh, at, at the entrance of thy word, this light. And that's why, church, people, you need to focus on the word of God. You need to understand the word of God. Because your answer is there. 
Praise God. Don't gamble with life. He saved us. The purpose of our salvation is to bring us into a kingdom, into a government, under a rule. That rule is the rule of his dear son. A place where we have been forgiven and given a chance to start afresh, to begin a new life. Praise God. A God who controls the time and the season. Who calls light out of darkness. Who knows you, who has taken you as his own because you accepted the payment. He redeemed you. He paid a ransom for you. A ransom is amount of money during the Roman Empire time which is paid to free a slave during a market. In a market place. Rich Romans used to go, good rich Romans, used to go to the marketplace where they're selling slaves. I say, how much is that girl? How much is that man? They are given the price. Then he, they, they pay. Not to go and enslave these people. They take these people and say, I feed you. Go and start your life. They were a ransom. They, they paid a ransom for them to feed them. And the person who has uh, paid for them does not enslave them again. That is what God did through his son. He paid a ransom to save you from the dominion of darkness. <laughs> Praise God. That is why Christ came. That's why we celebrate Christmas. But many people don't know that. They think they were saved to go to heaven. No, heaven is a place of retirement. Heaven is a place of rest. But the kingdom is a place for work. Praise God. Under the government of God, there's work to do. When you do your work well, of course, you bring glory to his name. When you do his work, your work well, you touch the lives of people. You cause people to see greatness in their lives. You cause blessings to flow on earth. You cause the wisdom of God to manifest through, what, through your life, through your work, through your service. The kingdom. The kingdom. Praise God. Out of misery. There's nobody who can be happy in the kingdom of Satan. No. You cannot be happy there. You cannot. It's a place of misery. The government of God the rule of God when we realize it, we recognize it, and we, we decide to submit to his rule, our lives can never remain the same. Wherever God has put you, if you are under the government of God, under the kingdom, your job there is to serve. To serve his kingdom, serve him. That is why he rescued us. That is why he saved us. He brought us into a wonderful kingdom. So Jesus came to introduce mankind back. To usher mankind back into the kingdom of God. To reintroduce us to the kingdom. Reintroduce. After Adam lost it. Adam lost it. Because God gave us a physical body. 
God cannot stay here on earth. I mean, with a physical body. He decided to give you a physical body to dwell here on earth. When Adam sinned, man got separated from God. Christ came. He came to do something. And he announced it in Mark chapter 1 verse 14 to 15. The living Bible. He announced it. We are told that later on, after John was arrested by King Herod, Jesus went to Galilee to preach God's good news. At last, the time has come, he announced. God's kingdom is near. Turn from your sins and act on this glorious news. Let me tell you, church, if you don't understand the purpose of salvation, you'll continue living even after you got saved. As if nothing great has happened. That's why you see people waste a lot of time. Getting sidetracked they go they begin to do the wrong things even those in the house of, of, of God the household of God they, get, they, they, they begin to follow other take other directions they waste a lot of time they don't realize what God has done for them but today, know that God saved you to bring you into his kingdom. And Christ came to reintroduce the kingdom back after it was lost by Adam. He went out to preach God's good news, God's agenda, God's good agenda. The good news, another word for the good news, of course, is the gospel, which is Greek. It comes from Greek, it originates from the Greek word. The word gospel has origin in Greek. But in plain English, it means good news. So Jesus came and said, look, you people. God has a good agenda for all human beings. He told them he has a good agenda. All kind of groups of people come with their agendas. But I want to tell you, no agenda will beat the one of God. In goodness. The communists came, the socialists came, all kind of people came. Or oh, if you join our group, if we go by this philosophy, if we, do, we will be okay. We will, no, they cannot be okay. No. No. Because the one who created human beings created human beings for a purpose. So they can never fulfill that purpose apart from him. They cannot. They cannot. So in verse 15, he said, At last the time has come. That is what Jesus said. At last the time has come. Which means people were informed that it was coming, it was coming, it was coming. Through prophecies, of course. Then when Jesus stepped on earth, he said, And when he says, It has come now. Praise God. God's kingdom is near. You are standing at the door. He told those people. It is near. It's just, it is just the door. Just the door which is between you and the kingdom. Just the door. That is what he said. He says it's near you. So what is now separating you is just the door. 
If you enter through that door, you enter into the kingdom. And he said, turn from your sins, repent, and act on this glorious news. I remember Jesus said, I am the door. I am the door into the kingdom. I am the door into the government of God into the place of the rule of God I'm the door. but he told them repent repent turn away from your acts turn away from your sins change your mind about the way you have been living change your mind change your mind and act on this glorious news. Act on it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe in this agenda. Believe in what God wants to do for you through Jesus. Believe. Because the agenda is good. When it comes to your life, the agenda is good. When it comes to, for example, for, to your ma it, it has, when it comes to your marriage, the agenda is good. Your business, the agenda is good. Your finances, the agenda is good. Your relationship with other people, the agenda is good. Family, the agenda is good. When you work for others, still the agenda is good. When you work in government, still the agenda is good. So, his agenda covers every area of life. But that agenda, in general, is called the good news. It's called the good news. Because it is good. Praise God. Sometimes people say, oh, the good news, the good news, but they, they, don't, they don't throw light on it. So, they just, the good news that, but they cannot connect to their lives. No, the good news is about your life. Every part of your life is covered in God's program. And Jesus said, believe what God is offering you. Believe it. He came and announced nothing but the kingdom. You see, one day I was watching television in the <laughs> evening. And the late Munro, uh, he was a very powerful teacher of the word. He died with his uh, wife in a plane crash. They had their own prayer of prayer. But already he had said, announced it many times that he has finished his work. Even when he came to Kampala here, I attended his meeting. He said he has finished his work. He has already trained people will take over from him. And the man had actually finished. And he understood his purpose. And as a church, we need to understand our purpose. Our purpose is to advance the kingdom of God. Preach the kingdom. So, Munro was very blunt one evening. I was listening to the TV and the man said, God did not send the church to preach the gospel of salvation. No. He did not send the, the church to preach salvation. That thing jacked me, it messed up my theology because for a long time I thought it was salvation, salvation. <laughs> I said no, this man must be a wrong man <laughs> but later God made me understood and he, and he challenged in that, in that, uh, in that uh, message he challenged his viewers that checked the Bible Jesus never said go and preach the gospel of salvation he said, go and preach the gospel of the kingdom, of the kingdom, of the rule of God, of the government of God. That's what he said. Huh? That's what Jesus said. <laughs> and he said, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world. <laughs> but, but you see, to enter the kingdom, you have to go through the door. And that door is Jesus. It's the only way into the kingdom. So the people who taught us should have connected that thing well so that we really understand the purpose of salvation is to bring men into the kingdom. Even as, as we advance the kingdom, we bring men into the kingdom. Why? There's a reason why they must come into the kingdom. 
There's a reason, a very important reason. And it has to do with the assignment he has given us on earth here. Earth is a place for work. It's your vineyard, it's your garden. It's a place where you, 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 you display the wisdom of God. The glory of God. Praise God. Of course, ultimately, we know that in the end, it is God that is glorified. But, but it is the kingdom. And look at what Jesus told them. They, talk, they, they ask him, said, Master, teach us how to pray. Teach us how, because prayer is a must for a believer. Because you have to work with God. If you have to work with God, you must pray. You must pray. You must ask. Prayer is talking with God. Asking for help. Asking for grace. Because when you pray, you bring God into the situation. If you don't pray, you struggle alone. He desires that his people should pray to him. Why? Because he has the answer. Why? Because he has the plan. Why? Because he has the power. Why? Because he owns everything. He has all the resources. Praise God. When you are in church, don't get sidetracked. Don't waste time. Don't sit just there thinking you are waiting to go to heaven. No, don't do that. Now this is what he told them. Matthew 6, 9 to 10. The living Bible. Pray along this line. Our Father in heaven. We honor your holy name. Verse number 10. We ask that your kingdom will come now. May your will be done here on earth. Just as it is in heaven. First, let your kingdom come. Let your government come. Let it manifest in my own life. Let it come now. Let it manifest now. Let it manifest in my marriage. Let it manifest in my job. Let it manifest in my business. Let it manifest in this situation where which I'm facing now. Let your kingdom be seen the way I handle my marriage. Let your kingdom be seen the way I handle my business. Let your kingdom be apparent. Let me tell you, church. What I've discovered is that people they actually don't do what you say. When you tell them something good, before they begin to do it, they wait to see whether you're doing it. So when they see you doing it, then they begin also to do it. I'm telling you. The good thing you know, it is very easy to, to do the wrong things because man uh, uh, was born in sin. But to do the good things, they need to see someone. Praise God. Let your kingdom come. Now. Let your kingdom come. It is starts inside you. Then it goes out to impact other people. The kingdom of God which is inside you will cause you to begin to influence all the people around you. To influence your workplace. To influence the people who are in touch with you in business. It's about influence. Let me tell you. Let it be felt. That's what Jesus was saying. How do you feel government? The government of Uganda, how do you feel it? Government here in Uganda, how do you feel it? Uganda, how do you How do you feel it? Because when you are living in your house, sometimes you may not be 
able to fill the government of Uganda. But when you are going to pay tax, you begin to feel, oh, the government of Uganda is there. Oh, the government is there. You break the law. Is when you feel that the government <laughs> is You begin to feel. When tags begin to terrorize uh, 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 an area and the government sends security there, you feel comfortable so that at last we are safe. Now we are safe. Government has sent security. They have, they have taken hold of the situation. Uh, uh, the, the, the wrong fellows have been weeded out. So it's about influence. Even the same thi way with the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has powerful influence if you believe in the agenda that God offers you through the word. It's complete. Everything falls in place the moment you begin to look at the bigger picture. And the resources comes. Because every government as a head, as the laws, and the law shapes the way they live. That is their culture. And the way they mobilize resources is according to the law. Resources for work. And when resources are employed well, that government, that country, that kingdom becomes better. So the same thing with the kingdom of God. His laws are there. He has made it clear. And Christ enables us to enter the kingdom. We looked at the word of God. The word of God begins to shape the way we live. Gives us a new culture. We begin to live the old cultures. Our old cultures. We begin a new culture. We begin to handle resources the way God says in his word. That's why we tithe. That's why we share. That's why we give. That's why we help people. That's why we use the laws. Give and you shall receive. That's a law. That ensures that the owner of the kingdom who owns all the resources because the earth and the, the everything in it and the people who are here belongs to So there's a law you use so that, the, that whatever resource you need is transferred from here. Your money, your resources. That you need the cash that you need is not in heaven. It's not stored in heaven. It is here. But your account books are, early, are in heaven. Your account book is in heaven. For your account, bank account, it is in heaven. So the transfers are done from there and then you receive it from here. <laughs> Praise God. Give and you shall receive. So you honor God with your tithe. You give your offering. You support the work of advancing the kingdom. God releases more. And your own particular, uh, your own personal work is a, a part of that work of the kingdom. So you are given what is, is going to handle what your assignment you are given plus extra. Because it says he'll be able to give you more than you need. That means you'll have the, the, what you need for your assignment. And because you have been using the law very well, you are given extra that will also support with the church where you are nurtured from, which is the body of Christ and is the head of the church and he speaks and acts through the church. Praise God. You can imagine that. So it means you, you will not have lack. You are not going to lack. You will not lack if you decide to walk by pre uh, kingdom principles. So you'll have resources for your assignment, for work. Praise God. And what does that work do? When you do it well, it brings glory to the name of God. But we are saved to Salvation brings us into the kingdom for work. 
Let's look at this scripture here. You can imagine the kingdom come, then the will of God, his desires. Then you pray for his desires, for you to know his will through his word and carry them out. Now let's look at this uh, 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 point here. Still the, on the same. So through Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and granted righteousness and holiness. You need to understand after entering through Jesus, you are given righteousness. You are granted righteousness. You are standing changes before God and holiness. Because the moment Jesus begin to rule in your heart, you begin to separate yourself from what God does not want. You begin to separate yourself. So that's how holiness comes. So because you accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, and particularly the payment he made for your sins, then God forgives you as if you have never sinned. And he begins to look at you through the righteousness of his son Jesus who is living inside you. He gives you righteousness and holiness and he puts his Holy Spirit back in you, which Adam lost. Back in you. Why? So that you communicate with him directly. You understand his written word through the Holy Spirit. Why? So that you can now do the work he has called you to do for the kingdom. Your wife, if you're a wife, then be a wife that really uh, oh, 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 is, is under the rule of the kingdom of God. Let the kingdom of God manifest in your being a wife. Let the kingdom of God manifest in your being a husband, a father, a businessman. Because when it happens like that, we begin to influence people and impact their lives begin to influence them. People will begin to ask, why is our life different? Why is his life different? And they begin to say, I, I want what he has. After that, after he has done that, he, he, rest, that he restores us back to our original position. Righteousness, holiness, the Holy Spirit in us puts us back where Adam was, uh, uh, was separated from God. From where Adam was fell from, he puts us back there, back to the original uh, plan of God. Adam fell away from God, he got separated. But before Adam fell, was he in daily touch with God? Can I hear it? Yes, he was in daily touch. In fact, they would meet every day in the garden. After Adam sinned, man got separated. The curse came. Trouble began. But God in his kindness said, let, let me send my son. To pay a price. Pay for everything. Pay for restoration. And everybody who accepts that payment is restored back. Is rescued from hopelessness. From that hopeless life. Of gloom and unhappiness. Let me tell you. Without Christ, without salvation, without submitting under the government of God, it is misery. It doesn't matter how much you, how much you have. You can have all that you want to eat. You can have all that you want to put on. You can have all that you want to drive. All kind of houses. 
you can buy the mess the most expensive things but without god all those things looks will be like toys you don't get any meaning out of it that's why sometimes people recently someone told me said you know pastor I'm in a family where people don't know God. They're religious, but they don't have any relationship. They have everything that money can buy. Whatever they want. Sometimes they get a lot of money they give witch doctors. Ten million shillings to give a witch doctor to protect them. To protect their interests. They, they feel, they feel this danger lacking around. Twenty million, twenty-five million. million. The person saw it being given to a witch doctor who is brought from long distance. Then one day the person said, but I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know what I want now. I, I don't, I'm not even interested in all the clothes I've packed in the wardrobe. I, I, I'm not even interested in the nice shoes. I have all, I, I, all these things. I, something, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. And the person who told me was there listening. And I said, and you did not do anything. I said, yeah. I've just been praying. I said, you have done a big mistake. That was the time you would tell the pastor that, look, you need Jesus. In fact, our prayer was fully answered. Their prayer was fully answered. They were, there's a team that was praying for that family. Was fully answered. The time was for this pastor to say, no, 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 no. What you need, why you are feeling a, a, a vacuum, a vacuum in your life. You need Jesus. That emptiness, because the money was there, the food was there, the cars were there, the houses. There are so many houses. I said, You did a terrible thing. You should have told the person what, what you are feeling that you are missing, which you don't know. It's Jesus. The door into the kingdom. And don't enter the kingdom like many Christians. They enter the kingdom and sit in the first room. Waiting to go to heaven. When there are so many rooms. Jesus said in my father's house there are so many rooms. You exploit. You surface. surface. When we come into the kingdom it is service. In fact, all Ugandans, we are under the government of Uganda. Whatever service you are offering, even if you are not a, a salaried government civil servant, you are actually serving the government of Uganda. You need to understand that. You are serving under this government. Whatever good you do, Will it add to the value? Will it, will it add value on Uganda? I'm telling you. You see? So, he restores us back to God through salvation which enables us when we are restored back to God because we have the Holy Spirit we are part of the kingdom we are citizens and given, given a special status we are sons we are priests we are kings 
to do what? For managing the earth for God. For managing the earth. The earth was not given to the devil. The earth was not given to angels. The earth was not directly under the control of God, but indirectly under the control of God through man. And that's why we pray to him to come and help us do the job he has given us. Ask his managers well. Whether you're a mother, you are managing children. Whether you're a husband, you are managing a family. That's the first unit. That's why we have to be very protective about our marriage. And take nothing for granted. Let us be very serious about this. Praise God. So the purpose of salvation boils down to service in the kingdom. It boils down to what? It boils down to what? Service in the kingdom. It boils down to? Alisa, let me hear a strong, uh, a strong voice. Because if you are not yet convinced with these scriptures. It boils down to what? Pastor Leonard, it boils down to what? Even that uh, someone near you cannot hear. Pastor Ken, it boils down to what? Service in the kingdom. Service. We come to the kingdom of God to serve. And God is glorified through our service. Lives are impacted and made great, better or great through our service. Praise God. Some people think they have nothing to do. You have something. Find it. That is what God will bless. I remember the economy of the kingdom. Give and you shall receive. It's just a step one. Step one. You give your tithe. You give to help others who are needy. You give your offerings for God to multiply. You give it in the service, directly in his service. So that more resources are caused to flow back to you. More than you need. Then you continue. So it's a continuous thing. And that's how the blessing comes upon what you are doing. If you don't know what God has called you to do, you pray until you know. Ask God, God, show me what I should do. Show me what I should do. Show me every day until he will show you. Because he answers prayer. Show me the business I should enter. Show me the business I should enter. Show me what I should do. Because don't copy people. Don't pick your money and put it in a business without hearing from God. But you will lock up and waste that money. But God speaks in the heart. He can put a burden in your heart. He can speak through dreams. He can speak audibly to you. You can hear that spiritual voice. You can hear it in your spirit. Because the Bible says that the spirit of man is the candle of God. God puts this candle. His light in your spirit to make you see what he wants to do. To make you see his will. Revelation is put inside your spirit. Praise God. So salvation, the purpose of salvation is to bring us into the kingdom of God. For nothing but service. Service service. We are managers, we are kings, we are priests, we are rulers. When we excel in our service, it results into dominion. We take charge of that area. We become a reference point. See so and so. See sister so and so. See brother so and so. See this gentleman. See this doctor. See this teacher. Don't live by chance. 
Don't gamble with your life. Live by purpose. Understand what God wants you to do and do it. That's how you redeem the time. That's how you redeem the time. Understand the will of God. If you don't know the will of God, you will waste a lot of time fighting the wrong battles. Now, you know the purpose of salvation? You don't waste time holding people in your heart. No. Because if someone wronged me five years ago, and I hold him or her in my heart, God cannot promote you. You are still stuck five years behind. You are still stuck because you are focused on what happened five years ago. Forgive the person, release the person. You have a future to live. You have a destiny to fulfill. That is it. And you continue going. You allow God to show you. Allow him to show you the way. Praise God. There is no time. There is no time to waste. Just like God forgive you. Forgive the person. Because let me tell you, you can, God can never do for you if you are not doing what, what he has done for you, you are not doing it for others. You are wasting your time. He's not a God of double standard. He's not a God of double standard. He has one standard. In fact, I'm asking you that don't miss the three o'clock service. Don't. All of you come back. Come back. Come back because I, I'm sharing the prophetic word that God put in my heart for you and leaders. Come back at three o'clock. And I will tell you how God struggled with Israel for 20 years. Only the kingdom of Judah and then the other one of uh, the, uh, the, the, the northern kingdom of Israel in the divided Israel he struggled with them until Assyria took them but he wanted them to be just he wanted them to be forgiving he wanted them to be united he wanted them to follow his covenant but they were not willing but let me tell you I, 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 I read the prophetic books and it made me understand how, how good God is and how kind God does not want anybody to perish that's the truth I'm telling you the truth God is so merciful he's so kind and now imagine the era of grace what we got cannot even be compared with what the and that's why Apostle Paul said that don't waste don't waste the grace of God as fellow workers with him we are his sons, we are his daughters we work with him but we should not waste the grace the opportunity that he has given us praise God and when we do our part well in the, the kingdom, kingdom, glory comes to God. Praise God. Glory come to God as a result of the service, as a result of what you have done in the kingdom. As a result, because if you do nothing, then how is God going to be glorified? His service. Praise God. So don't miss the three o'clock service. Because it's a prophetic word for 2022. And in the fact, your years after, after 2022, 
those years will be greatly impacted <inaudible> by that. Greatly impacted by that. Praise God. So the purpose of the king of, of salvation is the kingdom of God. Is to bring you into the kingdom. Once you enter the kingdom, righteousness and holiness becomes yours. Your position changes. You are standing with God changes. You become a child. You become a priest. You become a king. You become a son. You become a daughter. And his spirit is put in you to communicate directly with him. You are restored for what? For service. For managing the earth. For making Uganda better. Making your father's house better. Making your own family better. Making your business better. Making your workplace better. And God begins to move you from glory to glory. To glory, to glory. And then he's glorified. And you make the lives of people great and your own life becomes great. Church, sometimes what pains me when I hear a believer says there's no money. When I hear people say who are saved, where do I get money from? They have not taken time to look at the kingdom. They are not, they have not, they have not they are not looking at the bigger picture. They have not connected themselves to what God wants to do through them, for them. And, and so they, they, they miss what is there. And they struggle. Many are outside their assignment. In different areas. But I want to tell you from today, know that God rescued you to bring you into the kingdom of his son where you serve. You don't serve the God you don't see. You serve the people who are here on earth. You serve the people and make the world better. You serve people you impact their lives positively. You become a blessing to them. And in that way, God, people begin to see God. They begin to feel his influence. They begin to see his power. And they begin to give him glory. Praise God. Lift up your hands to the Lord and talk to him. Thanking him and ask him to forgive you. Where you have got it wrong before and you are busy doing other things. You are busy wasting time. You are busy fighting the wrong wars. Ask him to forgive you. And to help you and give you focus. Because broken focus leads to failure. When the devil cannot get you well directly, he gets you by breaking your focus. So ask the Lord to give you the grace to focus, to, underst to completely and understand why he has saved you and you focus on that and you fulfill what he has called you to do. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you honor. You are wonderful. You are mighty. You are gracious. Thank you, Master. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. Father, in the name of Jesus, make them what you have purposed them to be. Help them, Lord. Let them impact wherever you have put them through the kingdom. Let them make this city a big blessing through their service, Lord. Bless them in every way. Bless their work. 
Bless their families. Bless their children. Bless our nation. Bless the city of Kampala. Bless East Africa. Bless Africa. Bless Africa. Preserve Africa from all the evil plans a number of people have against Africa. Father, scatter those plans and enable Africa to come out and fulfill your redemptive purpose and enable revival to come to Uganda enable Uganda to fulfill its prophetic destiny in you we thank you Lord we give you glory we give you honor we thank you may power, glory and honor remain with forever and ever Amen I want to encourage you to tithe and to give to God what will help you is the blessing that follows the tithe and the blessing opens your eyes to see what God wants you to do. You must, your hand must find something to do so that God can bless it and bring profit to your life. And I want to tell you this. God will forgive you your sins. And you go to heaven, I believe. But when you don't tithe, God will not forgive you. In fact, because you don't need money in heaven, you need As money well, here. God, you suffer the full consequence here of not tithing, which will come through lack and struggling. There are people who don't even tithe, but they can't even enjoy that tithe. Non-believers, they don't enjoy what they have amassed. They don't. So tithe is an act of worship. Don't look at the 10% and you, 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 you don't look at the 90%. You keep looking at the 10 until you steal it. You want to the 90. Because that is number one step. Because God takes people step by step. He wants his honor first before he can honor you. Let's pray. Father, bless your people. You are the owner of everything. Bless them. May they never lack. May they prosper in this city, outside this city, beyond this city. All our friends, let them prosper. Those who tithe, send their tithe here, let them prosper. Bless your people wherever they are. In Jesus' name. Amen. Those who are online, you can send your offerings through the bank account on the screen. The mobile money uh, numbers there. People have been using them from different countries. They can, the money can come and uh, God will greatly bless you because I know this is a great fertile ground because we are preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So